All right, boys and girls, enough mucking about. Let's talk about the Wavecrest HVL1 two-way loudspeakers. Now, if you've never heard of Wavecrest Audio, and most of you probably never have, they are a startup company that sells just a speaker. That's it. Their whole page is just one product. And you can buy it as a single for 105 plus shipping or a pair for 200 plus shipping. Shipping's around 25 for the pair, he, I believe he told me. But you can order them in any denomination. So if you want one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven of these, it's doable. You can have them. And the reason it's doable and you can have them is because these speakers work as a surround sound. If you want to get three and do a 3.0 or 3.1 by a sub, or if you want to do five for a surround sound, you would just take one of these, lay it down or stand it up as your center channel and you're done. They don't make a center channel revision. They don't need a center channel revision. You ideally want the exact same speaker for all three front channels and you'll get them here because that's it. That's all they sell. Now, these speakers are special, both to me and to the vast majority of speakers on the internet, because they do certain things different and better than other speakers. Uh, if you read the little synopsis on the page, uh, they're, they're concentrated not on highs and lows, but on mid-range. And you think about that for a second, you realize yeah, pretty much every speaker you've looked at has you know, some amazing tweeter that gets really nice and sharp and clear, and then they try to get it as low as possible. And when you do that, you sort of ignore that middle bit, you know, where all the vocals and everything come from called mid-range. So what these have done is they've crossed over the tweeter and mid-range, tweeter and uh, low-end driver, real close. And when you do it real close, you get a warm sound. Couple that with a front port, which again, doesn't happen very often. Uh, the Infinity setup has front ports. My Emotiva... XRM 6.1 have front ports, and uh, that's about it. That's really about it. Oh, they, well, actually, those little pokes over there, those are pretty old, though. Those have a front port. Look how adorable that little port is. So you just want to look at an engineering standpoint. Five and a quarter in that poke with like a thumb-sized hole. Look at this. Again. Just bam. Now, this, I love the look of this speaker. Like, the actual look of it. It just looks pro. The reason it looks so pro is because it crammed so much into the front of it. This tweeter is like three sixteenths of an inch off the top, so they're not wasting any space. Like on the mic is here. Yeah, you know, they put it wherever it feels like it. Then we got three sixteenths of an inch between the tweeter and the driver. And then we got three sixteenths of an inch between the driver and the port. And they actually they went to a half inch because I physically couldn't put the port any lower down. So that's as much as you could squeeze in the front. I have the covers over there and they're just plain black. There's not even a, a logo on them. So it's just, you want understated speakers. These are them. Now, <clears throat> moving on to sound or well, build quality. That's a, that's a solid box. They're built, well, with sharp corners because it's a brand you've never heard of. And it's a brand you never heard of that just started up, and they don't have the money to spend on making things look pretty. And I don't care if they look pretty. I think they look great. Then again, I also have an 80-inch tall metal rack in the middle of the living room and crooked paintings. So maybe I'm not the best judge of looks and uh, practicality in that sort of way. Now let's take a walk. Let's walk around the back. Standard single set of binding posts. No dual. You don't... They don't want you to separate highs and lows. They want the crossover that they've designed in here to work. And because of the crossover in here, and because of how they sound, and because of that, if you don't know what that is, that's a frequency response graph that they offer on their site, which claims that is the frequency response, which is amazing if it's true. Because these are 5 dB increments. And if you're staying within that sort of range, that's studio monitor levels of reference flatness and that is not a rare that is a rare thing a very rare thing in a passive speaker think yamaha ns10s and those things were terrible these things are not terrible now the tweeter in these is a one inch soft dome and it's five and a quarter inch uh, driver and a massive i'm assuming two two and a quarter inch port probably two and a quarter and 
I didn't have them on this desk for the whole period of have had them for about two and a half weeks now, three weeks, two and a half weeks. Uh, I had them up where those pokes are, and I was using them in the surround sound here. I wanted to get three to use one as a center, but it doesn't matter because I know I used it as a center singularly with other speakers. So amazing, just amazing, and not that expensive either. Actually, where's my uh, pay? If you want a pair shipped, it's two twenty-five. If you want one, it's one hundred and five plus shipping. I'm not sure how the shipping reduces, so I'd have to go through the whole checkout process. If you want seven. They drop the price of every time you add a speaker. It goes from 105 a speaker for one to 100 a speaker for two to 97 and a half. It's like five dollars less every time you buy more than more than one. And it's really really hard to think of a better put together, better sounding speaker than these for the money. Now. What do we have that's cheaper than this that I recommend? The TIAC LH265s, which I think are very good. They're around $160 a pair now that the price is leveled out. And the question is, are these better than those? Because I really love those. These are certainly better here on a desk. For desktop use, if you're looking at this video and I have it, these are definitely in my 2.1 post. You want these over TX because of the front port, just for the front port. Most desks are against the wall. I'm not here, I've got plenty of space. But when you have a wall there, and this port is on the back, it screws things up totally. Things start booming and you're supposed to keep them at least that far from a wall and most people can't do it. So since these are front ported, you could almost put these speakers completely against the wall, only the wires would hold you back. How do they sound here? They sound amazing here. Burb. All right, back on track. The tweeter in these is very, very good. Very, very. It's the same design, the same one inch, uh, nearly flush mount design that's on my XRM 6.1s and on the Fluence, like that one over there. Which I do really, really like, just in general. Because if I had to pick a tweeter to like, it would be that design. It's okay. You know, it's probably going to sound just as good as all the other ones, and it doesn't. It sounds better. I don't know why. I can't answer the. I can't answer the whys. I can look at frequency response, and I could tinker inside with the crossover. I'm not going to. I'm just going to say that it's very special. The five and a quarters here are not high excursion. You'll notice that the surround on them, which I am touching and I shouldn't be touching, is actually very, very narrow. The excursion here. Look at the. Uh, look at the mica. Look at that. That's actually a bigger surround than this has. So they're not looking to turn this into a JL Audio subwoofer that sits on you know your, your table. And that's fine because you don't want it to. You want it to concentrate on mid-range, which is where vocals come from. 80% of all the sound you'll ever hear is from the middle, which is what Bose ignores and why they suck. So Bose has... Shrill highs and extreme lows, and that's that's what they sell. This is an anti-Bose set of speakers. And with that frequency response, I do believe you could actually use it for mastering. I, I, I believe these are studio monitor quality if you wanted to do that. I, I haven't seen a good set of passive studio monitors in a long time, but I'd qualify these in a heartbeat. Now... So they look plain, they don't cost too much, and they sound great. They have an imaging that I, I can't really describe compared to other speakers that it just filled, it almost felt omnidirectional when I had them up there in this array because they just sort of filled the room. They showed a, sort of shot sound up more than I've heard other speakers do. And I really do like them like a lot like a lot a lot i almost think it'd be a waste to put these in rears because the rears you know rears are important but to have such a good pair of speakers as rears is almost a waste now power they will handle 120 watts which is what that will put out at well half power so 
Or we can, you can run these off a T-amp. I have run them off a T-amp. They sound fine. I have an SA-50. I gave away the SA-60 in a giveaway. The cabinets are 5 eighths. That's why they're so stiff. Most, most speaker builders use half inch. Three quarters if you're really pushing for it. The emotivas are, emotivas are uh, three quarter. They're 12 pounds a piece. I'm just reading specs now. Eight ohms, 86 watts sensitivity, which is not a lot. You want something over 90 to really get sensitivity going, but it doesn't matter. These, these play really, really hard. Uh, when I had this amp hooked up over there, and I was just had them on the stands, and I was sitting all the way back there. I got these so loud that this front port was hitting me in the face from eight feet away. Like, there would be like a... And then air would hit me. And it was amazing. Now, are these the be-all, end-all of speakers? Well, there's not much I would recommend over them in this price. You have 200 and... $50 to spend on a pair of speakers. There you go. You have 200 percent spend on a pair of speakers. Either you, you know, don't eat lunch for a day and then buy these, or you could do the TX. I got no problem with the TX. I still love the TX. On a desk like this, these are better. In a room set up on stands, oh, it's so hard to tell. The tweeters in that are not soft dome they are a metal these are these are nicer softer this whole system here is warm and level and neutral if you've never had neutral speakers and you want to know here you go i have a set of the uh jbl 305s coming from a recent mass drop drop so i'll be able to tell you immediately if the neutrality of these rivals that I'm certainly sold on these tweeters. See, waveguides are great when you point them right at you, but having no waveguide and just having a raw dome that protrudes out past the face of your speaker, it just says something special. Like right here on this desk, I turn on my amp there, and I throw on something, and I'm not gonna play something for very long because I want this video available. I should pick the uh, output I want to event to the ODAC, which is plugged into the back of that. Here we go. Oh, God. Wake up the hard drive. Now, I'm going to do a sound demo, and I'm going to do it probably here. And then I'm going to review those chains and do a demo here. Although, honestly, those chains... Oh. Nope. Yeah. I'm going to do individual reviews for these wave crests, which I love, and the chains, which I also love, but in a different way. It's like sister love versus like beautiful call girl love. It's, it's real weird. Um, and then when I'm done with those individual reviews, I will shoot out these and the chains and the TX because I have my set of TX. And then, then, all hell is going to break loose on the internet. I'm hoping. Always hoping for all hell to break loose because a nice, nice argument is always good for views. These are better than Jesus. Bam! Sit on that one.